Okay, so I want to do a uh, short video on the new Archon Type B airsoft pistol. Uh, this is from EMG and OEM to manufactured by Armor Works. Uh, this is a fully licensed uh, airsoft gun. You can see you have the uh, full trademarks on both sides of the pistol. It's available in two different versions, an all black version or the version I have here which has the tan color slide. Um, I think EMG call it F, an FDE color, but it's not quite FDE, if you ask me. Anyway, um, I've had this for a few weeks now. I've um, shot it a bit. I've used it in one game, and I just want to kind of give my feedback what I think of it, both the good points and the bad, and there are some bad points about this pistol that I personally don't like. So, first of all, let's talk about the externals. Um, uh, Good quality, nice fit and finish, um, nice tight slide to frame fit. You can hear there's kind of no rattle there, which is good. Um, so the pistol does actually feel very good in the hand. It's very comfortable to hold. It's kind of naturally very pointable. Um, it has a very low bore axis, so it sits very low in the hand, and this is to, this is due to the design of the uh, locking system that the Archon uses, which we'll talk about later. So um, it has a single-sided mag release, which actually is reversible, so you can swap it left to right or right to left. It has a single-side slide stop, so no slide stop on the other side, um, and no manual safety or no trigger face safety. Um, it's got this large square checkering on the grip, which is actually quite comfortable to hold. It's not too aggressive and or, or too slippery either, just, just right. Um, sights are nice, you have this fixed, non-adjustable uh, rear plain black serrated black rear sight with a nice wide notch which allows you to pick up the front sight very quickly and the front sight is this kind of orangey red uh, fiber optic. So um, nice externals, let's talk about some of the negatives that I found. Uh, first of all Picatinny rail. Um, it may be slightly off spec. I've tried this with my copy uh, X300 and X300U lights and they are very loose on the rail. Um, so if you're gonna get one of these pistols and mount a flashlight to it, you may want a flashlight which has a, a screw mount to attach. So you can adjust the, the tensioning on the rail. Um, right, first thing I don't like about this pistol, the magazine release. So in a normal firing grip, it, I just cannot release the magazine. So you have this raised section here which is you know designed to prevent the magazine being ex magazine release being accidentally depressed. Unfortunately in a normal firing grip it kind of blocks your thumb and also there's a fairly strong spring in the magazine release I guess. So to release the magazine you kind of have to flip the gun in your grip to release it. And then I run into the other problem in that the bottom of my hand Kind of rubs against or touches against the base plate of the magazine which is quite large and stops it from releasing freely so for me to release the magazine i've got to flip the gun make sure the bottom of my hand is not touching the magazine release and then i can release it so um, it's not going to be the fastest magazine change in the world um, probably not the best pistol for airsoft ipsc right next thing we're going to talk about is the trigger on this gun so you see you have this nice looking kind of flattish not curved, but kind of two-angled flat section trigger. Um, it has one of the heaviest pulls in airsoft. Um, I've seen other people say it's about six pounds. So you pull the trigger, about three millimeters, maybe four millimeters, you hit the wall, and then pressure, you know, gradually, pre pre you gradually increase pressure, and then uh, finally it breaks. It's a fairly clean, crisp break, but it, it is heavy. I mean, we are spoiled with airsoft. Most airsoft pistols have probably two or three pound trigger pulls. This is probably closer to real steel trigger, but it's not a good trigger. The other issue with this trigger is um, for the reset, the reset is neither audible nor tactile. So there's no sound or no feel to let you know when you hit the reset. So we pull the trigger, rack the slide, release forward, and you will hear nothing. So you have really no way to know where the reset is, so you just have to learn it. So we pull and go forward, and again it's probably about three millimeters. No, not yet. 
yep, there we are, there's the reset, so horrible reset. Um, as I mentioned, the magazine release is reversible. I'm not going to do it on camera. Um, Bryce Tactical Armor from AW has shown you how to do this, but basically you just put the magazine in backwards, and this allows you to pop out the mag release button and pop it in the other direction if you so choose to. All right, we're going to have a look at the internals now. So, uh, hang on. Okay, to field strip this gun, you have to push out this uh, pin here. Uh, ideally, you should use some sort of non-marring tool. Um, I didn't, I just used my, uh, my multi-tool. So you can see here, here's the pin. So you pull it, it's captive so it won't come out, which is good. Slide the... Okay, you can then... Hang on, I can get it a bit more. Slide the slide off. So if we look inside, the frame is fairly conventional. You kind of have a Glock style hammer system here. Um, nothing really special in the frame apart from uh, this pin. Um, the slide is where it gets quite interesting. Completely different from, let's say, uh, Glocks or M&Ps. So first of all, you have this triple recoil spring system, and this replicates the real steel Archon Type B. This is pretty cool. And then we have the locking system. So rather than a tilting barrel locking system, you have this locking piece here. I'll just show that there. Okay. And basically the pin on the frame goes through this hole and cams up and down to lock and unlock the barrel. So we'll take out the recoil spring, give you a look at that. Uh, these are not captive, well the first spring is not captive anyway, so you need to be a little bit careful of that. And then we have the inner barrel. So I have I have already put a, a AW type bore, triad type bore barrel on this, and also with the AW precision bucking. So just have a quick look inside the slide. So front sight is held on by a single screw. Uh, blowback unit and rear sight is held on by two screws, which is an improvement over um, Glock style pistols, or TM Glock style pistols. There's the nozzle. So, um, so as I mentioned, the barrel on this, it doesn't uh, it doesn't tilt uh, at all, unlike the you know Browning Glock style system. Um, instead, to lock and unlock, this piece just cams up and down, which is pretty interesting. So we're going to talk about the last thing I don't like on this. Now, if you if you look at the outer barrel, you or look at the, the hop up chamber, you will notice there is no hop up adjustment wheel. Um, you have your hop arm here. The hop up is adjusted by using a 1.5 millimeter allen key which goes into this hole there's a small grub screw on here which pushes on the hop rubber um, I have found however that the hop up seems to have minimal effectiveness um, I was shooting this pistol at the W28 uh, test range um, at a game a couple of weeks ago um, shooting at the metal square metal targets at about the 20 meter range. I think they are either 6 inch or 8 inch square metal plates and to hit the metal plate at 20 meters I was having to hold my point, my point of aim about 6 inches above the metal plate to be able to get my shots on the metal plate and to be honest uh, adjusting the hop up whether it was all the way up or all the way down or somewhere in between didn't really seem to have much effect. Um, this was using 0.28 gram BLSBBs maybe I should try something a bit lighter um, see if they work better with hop up. Anyway, it's it's an interesting pistol. Um, as I said, it feels good in the hand. It points naturally. Uh, the build quality is good. The negatives are the hop up is perhaps not so effective. The magazine release um, takes some getting used to. Um, you do need to adjust your grip to better release the magazine. At least I do. Um, the trigger is pretty heavy and. As I said, the, the, there's no audible or tactile reset, um, so that's that's the negatives. Um, but apart from that, it seems reliable. Um, 
good sights as well. All right, so that's my impressions. Um, perhaps later we'll do a shooting review, maybe, maybe not. All right.